We have said that the seven deadly sins, or capital vices, distort some natural love designed to either move us towards our good or away from evil. As human creatures, we take joy and delight in certain true goods. The vices then distort our desires for these goods by amplifying them beyond or reducing them from the order of right reason. However, there are two capital vices that are different from the others. There are two that do not begin with joy or delight at all, but rather begin with sorrow. These vices are sloth and envy. Let me explain. The act of the virtue of charity is to love, to love God and to love our neighbor. St. Thomas explains that there are six effects of love, three of which are internal effects in the soul and three are external effects. Internally, the effects of love are joy, peace, and mercy. Externally, the effects of love are beneficence, almsgiving, and fraternal correction. Sloth and envy are vices that directly attack the joy that ought to be an effect of love. Now, this sets sloth and envy apart from the other capital vices as having a distinctive sadness to them. Specifically, sloth is a sadness regarding the divine good, and envy is a sadness regarding our neighbor's good. In this video, let's focus on the vice of envy. Envy, as we have said, is sadness at the good of another. So this means that in the presence of a perceived good belonging to our neighbor, whether it be riches, talent, fame, or excellence of some kind, the envious or jealous soul will not respond the way that the soul ought to respond to goodness, that is, with joy. But rather, the envious soul will respond with sadness. This means that envy is a vice that is evil in its object. It is not merely a good desire that is distorted beyond reason, as in lust, gluttony, or anger, but a feeling of sadness where there ought to be one of joy. But how is this even possible? I mean, if love is the natural response to good, and if love gives birth to a desire for the good, and then a joy in that good, how is it possible that our neighbor's good because become a source of sadness for us, our sadness? Well, St. Thomas explains that there are four ways that our neighbor's good may be a source of sadness in us. Only some of these are sinful and some of them are not. First, St. Thomas recognizes that sometimes our neighbor's good really is a reasonable threat to us. He explains that a man may be sorry about another's good insofar as it threatens to be an occasion of harm to himself, as when a man grieves for his enemy's prosperity for fear that he may do him some harm. St. Thomas then explains that this sorrow for another's good, since it is reasonable, is not envy properly speaking, but an effect of fear. Thus, it is not sinful. Second, we may feel sorrow for our neighbor's good not because it is his good, but only because that good which he possesses, we ought to possess. St. Thomas explains, we may grieve over another's good not because he has it, but because the good which he has, we have not. And this, properly speaking, is zeal. And this zeal is not necessarily sinful. If it is zeal for a true and virtuous good, it is righteous zeal. However, if it is zeal for a temporal, worldly good, it can be sinful. Third, we may feel sadness at our neighbor's good because that good is possessed by him unjustly. St. Thomas says, One may grieve over another's good because he who happens to have that good is unworthy of it. Now this sorrow is not, properly speaking, envy, but indignation. It is not envy proper since that which causes our sadness is not our neighbor's good per se, but rather that aspect of injustice that accompanies that good. Now, yes, there is a possibility of righteous indignation, but St. Thomas warns us that this sadness at our neighbor's good, even if it's under the aspect of injustice, is virtually always forbidden, since it is most always directed at an unjustly received 
worldly good or worldly fame. But lastly, we may grieve over a man's good insofar as his good surpasses ours. This is envy, properly speaking, and is always sinful. This, friends, is envy, plain and simple. It is sadness in the face of goodness. Sadness because goodness in another is seen as a threat to one's own, as something that lessens our own good name or excellence. The envious man is focused on the excellence of another, not because it is not his, but only because it belongs to another and does not redound to himself. This is why St. Thomas says that men are envious of those goods in which a good name consists and about which men like to be honored and esteemed. Since envy emerges from pride as its root, that is, a love of one's own excellence, envy always looks to another's excellence as somehow an excellence owed first to himself. This is why envy is so sad, and this is why it is an attack on the joy of charity, where the other vices at least begin with a little pleasure and only twist that pleasure for evil, envy begins with sadness. The envious man lives in a sad zero-sum world where the gifts, excellences, or honor that God gives to another is somehow that which God is keeping from him. The envious man lives in a world where not only is the true evil around him a threat to himself, but even more sadly, it is the very good around him which is perceived as a threat. I mean, how miserable. This is why envy is a capital vice or the head of a series of daughter vices that flow from it. And the tradition lists five. First, detraction, by which we defame another's good name. Second, tail-bearing, by which we slanderously tear down others. Third, grief of another's prosperity. Fourth, hatred. And lastly, joy of misfortune. Now, the cure for envy is the one exercise that rarely crosses the mind of the envious. That is, giving thanks to God for what he has indeed given to us. And truly, we are all so blessed by our Heavenly Father. Any good gift given to our neighbor is not in any way a gift that God is keeping from us. It's just the opposite. The honors that God has given to our neighbor are just those excellences that he is giving us through our neighbor. We must thank God for the gifts that he has given us. But most of all, we must learn to thank God for the gifts that he has not given us, but given to our neighbors. And this, friends, is the key to joy. Brothers and sisters, keep studying. This is Father Brad Elliott for the Western Dominican Province. You've been watching Truth in 60. For more exclusive videos, download the OP West app. Link is in the description.